beautiful saints of God, welcome to this act of praise and worship. Today is Sunday the 10th of May 2020 and we are also celebrating Mother's Day today. So happy Mother's Day to everyone who is watching. Um, I always like to say you don't have to be a biological mother to be a mother because as a believer all the children of God belong to you. And this bouquet this morning is in special recognition of my biological mother. She loves indigenous flowers. So mom, enjoy the flowers and everybody enjoy the service. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Peace be on this house and all who dwell therein. Alleluia. Let us pray together the collect, the purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Forgive us, Lord, when we wander from the new life of Easter. Forgive us, Lord, when we find the truth of Easter hard to believe. Forgive us, Lord, when we find it hard to live our Easter faith. Let us take a moment and confess together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in this newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sin and set you free from it, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together our collect for this day, which is the fifth Sunday of Easter. Eternal God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life for all creation. Grant us grace to walk in his way, rejoice in his truth, and share his risen life, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today we have beautiful reading set. Um, our gospel is from the gospel of John, chapter 14, reading from verse 1 to 14. And in this, we will talk about it more later, but I hope that you go and read this particular gospel. In this gospel, we have Jesus in his farewell discourse. Um, and that is coupled with a reading from the New Testament, from the book of Acts, where we see the first martyr, Stephen, um, and his martyrdom and his dying words. And then we have a wonderful piece from Peter, where he is writing to the churches. And he talks about what it means to be the resurrected people. And finally, we have the Psalm, Psalm 31, from which Jesus quotes some of his last words on the cross. So if you've not had a chance to do the readings, please do the readings, press pause and do the readings now. Otherwise, you will struggle to follow the fullness of the sermon. Let us pray. Lord, may my lips be as the pen of a ready writer. As I bring a word to your people and speak in your name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It is Mother's Day, so I am going to swap up a little bit the he, she pronouns for God. And I hope that it will be an encouragement for you to think in new ways about God. So this morning we read in the Gospel, Jesus say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
and no one comes to the father, the mother, except through me. And I'm so blessed that this is the scripture for today, not only because I love the gospel of John, but because I've heard this particular phrase, I am the way, the truth, and the life, used by so many preachers to condemn and to scare people. When in fact at their heart, they are meant as words of deep comfort and to give direction in times of distress and despair. So let's take a fresh look at what Jesus is offering us here today. In the gospel, we are in the farewell discourse. Jesus has washed his disciples' feet. He's explained to them all that he will die and Judas has left the building. And knowing what is imminent, Jesus tells them, let not your heart be troubled. Jesus knows what's coming for himself and for his disciples. He knows he will be betrayed by a friend, that he will be denied by Peter, and that the disciples will scatter. But he also knows that through this act of sacrifice, God will open a new way into her kingdom. Let not your heart be troubled. So why should our heart not be troubled with this brewing storm for the persecution that will follow? Jesus says, because I go to prepare a place for you, so that where I am, there you will be also. And in response, Thomas, you've got to love Thomas, he says, well, how will that be? And here we have Jesus' answer, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Deep, deep, very deep. I am the way. Before we were known as Christians, we were known as people of the way, people on a journey, a pilgrimage. Jesus both leads us on this way and is our foundation, is our path. But what is this way? Well, we know that this is the way of the cross, the way of kenosis, the outpouring, the way of service, the way of suffering, rejection, dishonor, and ultimately the way of forgiveness, the way into the kingdom of God. And this morning in our Acts reading, it has us see the death of our first martyr of the church, Stephen who follows the way very literally and discovers in there the truth and the life. So let's pause for a moment and look at Stephen. We know that he's preaching the longest sermon recorded in the New Testament and he's detailing for his listeners the ways in which they are disobedient to the revelation of God in Jesus Christ. And finally, his listeners get so enraged that they drag him out of the city to stone him. And present at the stoning is Saul, who will become Paul. And Stephen sees a vision of the ascended and glorified Jesus at the right hand of the Father. And he speaks the words from our psalm this morning, an echo of the words spoken by his Lord on the cross. Lord do not hold the sin against them. And I've often wondered, if Stephen had not prayed that prayer, what would have happened to Saul? Would he have ever become Paul? But that's for another sermon. We also see something else about this way, that in the midst of the most powerful and pervasive opposition, Jesus and Stephen steadfastly resist, not violently, but by entrusting their life and their future to God. Jesus uses today's Psalm 31 verse 5a, into your hands I commit my spirit. And so we see Jesus able to forgive, grounded in a deep trust in God. So back to the way the truth and the life. The truth that Stephen finds here on the way is that Jesus and the Father are truly one. To know one 
is to know the other. It is what Jesus tells Philip further in our gospel reading this morning. I am in the Father and the Father in me. And it is the Father in me, living in me, who is doing his work. His work. The work of salvation. The work of love. The work of a father bringing his children home. Now, as I said, we all know God has no gender, right? So by tradition, we use father, but God is also mother. In other words, God is a parent God. And this is one of the great blasphemies that Jesus is accused of, to dare to assume this intimacy of connection. So today being Mother's Day, I want to play a little bit with this approximation of God, God as mother. I can speak as someone who has a mother, that we have certain expectations and assumptions of our mothers, whether or not in their humanness they have the ability to live up to all of that is a very different story as I'm finding on my journey of motherhood. But the feelings that the word mother evokes, I would offer are somewhat universal. I trust my mother's love for me, even when I don't necessarily understand it. I know that in my mother's eyes, I am a great gift, a blessing, and that she would do anything in the world to protect me to defend me, to ensure my happiness. In fact, those of you that know my mother will know she's quite a lioness with her cubs. Even when I'm wrong, even when she corrects me or my actions or my words cause her pain, she would never abandon me. She would never betray me. She would never desert me. No matter the pain to herself, she would stand by me. She has stood by me. As Mary stood at the foot of the cross, watching her son die, so that perhaps the last thing he may see could be her face. The truth. The truth of God's great and unconditional love for us. God works to give life because this activity communicates essentially who God is. The psalmists always trust that God is committed to them, and they in turn commit their lives to God. A commitment and love, the word is hased, revealed forever on that cross where Jesus, the Son of God, died so that we may have life and have it in all abundance. Life. We spoke last week about the difference between this life, this mortal body, and true everlasting life, so I won't go there again. But we're speaking of life in God, the life that Stephen saw in his moment of leaving this life, a life hidden with Christ in God, the life of a resurrection people, the life to which we are called by Peter this morning, Another great example of God's unconditional love that this sinner, Peter, becomes the rock on which Jesus builds his church. Peter talks about us as living stones, stones that the builders rejected, refashioned to become a temple of God, literally the dwelling place of God. And my favorite verse, for those who know me well, 1 Peter 2, verse 9 and 10. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. For once you were not a people, but now you are a people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. I am the way, the truth, and the life. What a wonderful invitation for us this morning. 
And I'd like to offer the starting point of this journey, the foundation of this journey and the end of this journey are the words from the psalm this morning. Psalm 31 verse 17a. All my days are in your hand. All my days are in your hand. So let not your hearts be troubled, even as the storm gathers and as it rages. For as they say, your life God walks on water. And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. Amen. Today we're going to do something different. I've chosen three prayers that I would like to offer to God today for three groups of people. And I'm going to light these candles to represent the prayers as we pray them. Our prayers from our prayer book. And I will be using them on our behalf. We pray first for those who influence public opinion. Almighty God, you proclaim your truth in every age by many voices. Direct those who speak where many listen, those who write what many read, and those who influence what many see, that they may do their part in making the heart of this people wise, its mind sound, and its will righteous. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for our home. Lord, visit our homes and drive far from them the snares of the evil one. Let your holy angels dwell in them to preserve us in peace and may your blessings rest upon us forevermore. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, for our families and friends. Almighty God, Father of everlasting mercy, we entrust all who are dear to us to your never-failing care and love, both for this life and for the life to come, knowing that you are doing for them things beyond all that we could ask or think. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So remember, O oh Lord, what you have wrought in us and not what we deserve. As you have called us to your service, make us worthy of our calling, through Jesus Christ our Lord. 